In this video, I want to show you how to use smart components. Uh, and the thing we will do in this video is to attach and detach tools. The focus will be on smart components, so I will not. Uh, so all the robot programming is done already. Uh, the output signal that I will use is already set up uh, using the I/O configurator. Uh, and uh, the tool data for the robot tools uh, is already here, so the TCPs are already set and so on. So if you press play, let me just delete this one. If you press play, you will see that the robot runs, but it doesn't pick up any pick up anything. Um, okay. So to create a smart component, we go to modeling and we press smart component and you will get to this uh, window here. Uh, for this tutorial, we will only use the design and compose tabs. Um, so to start this, this smart components, we want to be attached to the robot so it moves with the robot. So just drag it up and attach it. Let's move it to the, to the robot. Um, and if we go back into smart components now, we can start to compose this one. So we'll go to the compose tab. Uh, and here you can add uh, whatever you need for your smart component and it's basically uh, if there is uh, any objects or anything that should be inside here. But for this case, we just need these predefined uh, components by Robot Studio. So if you press Add Components, you will get this dialog box here uh, where you can find the predefined uh, uh, components to add. And you can see that we have signals and properties, prim uh, parametric primitives, and so on. Uh, sensors, actually act actions, and you can browse through these ones to do whatever you need, conveyors or movers or whatever. <clears throat> but for this particular case, I will need an attacher to attach the tool to the robot. I also need a detacher to be able to leave it again. Uh, I will need uh, some sort of sensor uh, to be able to sense which which tool I'm close to. And for this, I use the closest object in this case. And I will also need this logic gate, um, which you will see soon. So uh, now we have all the components we need. Um, and in order to configure those to do what we want, you can click on them and you see that the, this dialog box appears here. Of course, it's different for different components. So we can start by configuring this attacher here. You can also see that you can read about the, uh, the different components here uh, to the right. So to start off, we need this attacher to attach something to something. Uh, so this parent here uh, is what you want the, the attacher to attach something to. In this case, we want it to attach a component to the robot. So we choose this one here. You can see that you also have a flange here, and this is basically what part of, in this case, the robot you want to attach the object to. For the robots, we only have the wrist to choose from. And the child here um, uh, is what object to attach. And you can choose a, uh, a static object, or you can leave it empty if you want to use, like we do, a sensor uh, to attach. Um, to, to, to define what to attach. And everything again, you can read about it here. So if we move on to the detacher, uh, there is really nothing to, to configure here. You can see that you have a key position, so you leave it wherever it is at the moment. Uh, and the closest object here, we have something to define, a reference object. In this case, it's the robot. Otherwise, the sensor will only sense the robot uh, because it's always gonna be closest to this sensor. Um, and we need to define a reference point and you can read uh, whatever it is here. But it's basically for this sensor, it is uh, what point are we measuring from when we, we decide which object is closest to it. So for this case, I will choose the uh, 
TCP of the tool zero. So go to reference point. I choose this coordinate system here and press apply. And I don't need to fill anything for the root object since I use this uh, reference point. And for the logic gate, I want it to be a NOT gate because the purpose of this one is whenever the input signal to the smart component goes to low or to false, to zero, uh, I need to use the activate the detacher. But now we can go to the design tab here and you will see that we have uh, the components pop pops up here um, in this graphical interface and I will just arrange them so that it is easy to follow um, like this then we can go and define them zoom in so you can see what I do um, so here is the different objects uh, and you can also add input and output signals to the smart component in this case I need an input signal I need a digital input signal, uh, so let's just name it, attach to, OK. Uh, so now I have everything I need here for this case. Um, and whenever you want to connect, you can see that I can hover over these uh, properties here and this pen shows up. Uh, so when you want to connect something, you click and you drag and you connect it to the property you want to connect it to, like this. And it's going to snap to this one, and then you can leave it here. Uh, so what I want this one to do is whenever this signal goes to 1, I want the closest object sensor to identify the closest object to it. And whenever that is identified, I want to activate the attacher to attach uh, the object that is closest to it um, and in order to define what object the for the attacher to attach I choose this closest object here you can see I hover over this property and I drag it to the child uh, uh, um, interface here and the child object and you can see that there is also a closest part here, but since we work with tools, these are not parts, they are components or objects, so I need to use this um, closest object. Uh, so that's it for the attacher, pretty much. Uh, and for the detacher, I want it to be activated whenever this signal goes back to zero. So I move it through the, the NOT gate. So it should execute when the attach tool signal is low. But the detacher also needs to know what object to detach from its parent. So again, hover over this one, pen shows up, drag the signal to the child component here. Uh, so now the detacher knows what objects to detach. And this is pretty much it for the, uh, the smart component itself. But we also need to connect the smart component to something, to some signal. Uh, and to do so, we go to simulations, we go to station logic. Uh, and we get this uh, window. You can see that it's pretty much the same as for the uh, smart component. And you can see that this is the robot controller, and here we have our smart components. You can also add input and output signals to your entire station. Uh, we're not going to use that now. And you can see that there already are some signals that shows up for the controller. Uh, when you open this the first time, if you haven't added any signals inside here, uh, these won't show up. But since I tested the station, they're already here. But basically what you do is you open this drop-down menu, you choose whatever signal uh, you want to choose. And you click it and it gets added. This was uh, input signal, so the input signals will be to the left and the output signals to the right in this uh, interface. But the signal I want to use is this DO attach tool. So again, the pen shows up and I want to attach it to this signal here, um, the attach tool of the smart component. So now the output signal. Uh, attach tool is connected to the input signal attach tool in the smart component. So this is how you connect 
your controller with the smart components and if you had other smart components you can connect smart components with smart components and and so on but this should be it for for this um, demonstration this tutorial so if we zoom out a bit here and we press play uh, hopefully this works now if I didn't do any mistakes let's see if it picks it up and it picks it up um, and it moves and does whatever it's supposed to do. I don't know what this is, maybe paint something. Uh, but if we go to the smart component, we should also see that it leaves it here. It does, and you can go in here and you can watch the smart component and you can see the signal list going high here. Means that the, um, the sensor should be high and executed. And the vacuum tool is the, the closest object change to the vacuum tool. And whenever it goes back to zero, you're going to see that the logic gate switches its output like this. Note that the execute um, input signal always says zero here. But that's uh, due to the way this one works. So don't look too much into this or too close on these ones. So that's it for this video.